Hello and welcome to Capture Design Training Module number three. It is everyone's favorite topic today of electrical. So let's dive right in and not be afraid and get our learning going. So basically we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk about the different ty power types that we have within Capture, um, the components that go with it, the capacities, and of course the planning. And of course we do have that auto electric routine um, similar to the um, auto hardware routine which we learned about in module two. So basically the objectives are we're just going to understand the wiring schemes. Um, like we talked about earlier, it's that eight wire four circuit system, which we'll hit on again in here in a second. We're going to learn the different harness lengths that we need to make sure that all of the electrical is connected or frame to frame so that everything is connected and there's still room for all your data. And of course the different electrical layouts, pass-throughs, things of that nature. So again, everything is powered up so your customer can plug in and get to work. So let's take a deep breath and dive right in. So we talked about a few different times just from a power perspective is that we do have the eight wire four circuit system which is pretty typical across the industry. Yes, it meets all your national electrical codes. Um, and one neat thing that Trendway does offer um, with Capture is that we do have a pre-powered option. We talked about that as far as the, the P1, the P2, and the PP options in the frame designer. Um, but basically this gives you the ability to have power or the frames come with the power blocks um, and the nice thing about that from a sales perspective is that we do that at no charge we include those power blocks with the frame and do not charge any extra money um, to do that for you um, and again we do have the specific um, hardwire options for both Chicago um, New York and San Francisco so when we're looking at the frames themselves, we do have the standard panel. Um, that's going to be when you want all your electrical components ordered separately. The other key part of this is that if you want to have any um, communication modules, um, you're going to have to utilize that standard frame because when you do that pre-powered option, we're going to assume you want power in both cutouts or all the cutouts within that frame itself. So that pre-powered option, like I said, gives you the brackets that are going to be factory installed and then you just put your blocks in place you're going to have to also order your in feeds harnesses and duplexes all jargon that we will um, enlighten you on very very shortly so again you've seen this um, screen before in some of the other modules um, and again you have the option to do that eight wire frame okay so again same deal as far as the standard base or the elevated base frame same with same heights um, and again we talked about your base options the BB the CB and the CC as well um, the pre-powered option is going to be essentially the same exact frame like I said the only thing that when you get it in the field the brackets for the blocks will be attached to the frames um, and again at the bottom there you see the P1 which is going to be your base power the P2 which is going to be your only beltway power and then the PP is going to be your base and beltway power. All right, so I love this little diagram because this kind of shows where all your power and data is going to potentially come from and how it can be routed. So again, we do have your ceiling feeds and base feeds that can come in from the side of the frame as well. Um, and again, as you can see with the um, dotted lines, it can actually be routed at the base, the beltway, and we also do have that mid panel um, cutout that's available, which is kind of that dotted line that's right above the base there. A couple other fun facts on this page is that the 20 inch panel, we do have a 20 inch wide panel for specific space concerns. Um, it has no ports and no ability to access power or data. It is going to be a pass through only. The 24 inch wide frames um, is only going to have one opening or one port per side and that is both at the base and beltway. So you're going to have you're not going to have um, two and then anything wider than 24 you're going to have two openings at the base and in the beltway and on both sides of the frame okay now kind of the real life picture here this kind of takes takes the tiles off the frame and basically shows you what it kind of looks like behind the tiles themselves so again in this particular picture we have power at the base and at the beltway um, again it's kind of hard because the duplexes are the same color but again you have the duplexes it is a 30 inch wide frame so you have 
four duplexes on that single side of the frame. Um, bullet three is really nice in that the blocks just snap right into place on the brackets themselves or the hardware. And again, we talked about that the brackets themselves will be um, attached to the frame if that pre-powered option is specified. Okay, and now we're going to get into talking a little bit about circuitry, which is always everybody's favorite topic. Um, each circuit is rated for 20 amps, and we offer three four-circuit type options in our um, wiring. We have one that's called three general circuits with one dedicated circuit, three isolated circuits with one dedicated circuit, and then two general circuits with two isolated circuits. Uh, the next two slides are going to show you the power pack electrical schematic and circuitry options as discussed, and we'll explain this in a little bit more detail to help understand it better. So this is basically the building's power source diagrams. Um, this is something that's important for designers to, to kind of determine what the building system is that's being involved for circuitry that will be used or needed. We, these are the uh, different options that we were talking about on the previous two slides up, and it's basically showing you the diagrams for the different circuitries that we provide. So obviously you want to keep in mind if you need a lot of dedicated or isolated circuitries, there are different ways to wire this. It is an eight wire four circuit system, so these are just kind of schematics showing the different ways those eight wires are used. I always find it's important to give these to your electrician, determining the type of circuitry that you are going to be using, just to make sure that everybody's in sync when it comes time for installation of the um, hard wiring. So moving back to the parts and pieces, um, the power components that go into, again, specifying that elect the electric uh, portion of capture. So um, what we call the power pack blocks, this is going to be um, when you do that pre-powered um, option within the frame itself, this is what you're going to get with that pre-powered option. This is the part where the duplex will actually snap into, so that little kind of cutout or that dish that you see in the front of those, um, that's where the duplex is going to snap into. Um, and then at the bottom you're actually going to see the harnesses. So the harnesses attached to the end from male-female connection on the end of that which attach block to block. So basically you have your infeed which we'll talk about from in a second that comes from the building power that attaches into the block and then from block to block you have the harnesses. All right. So and as we talked about on the other slide when we have a 24 inch wide frame you're going to get that CPB PPB24, the version that's on the top. The other thing that I want to make sure that you're aware of that is if you're looking at one frame that is wider than 24, so let's say you have a 36 inch wide frame, you want one opening to be power and one to be data. Um, to allow that opening um, to be data, you're going to again specify that 24 inch block at the top to put on one side of the frame and then the other side is going to be open for your data communication module. All right, That last bullet is going to be a huge one for you from an E standpoint because again if you're going to go um, panel to panel it's going to be that uh, PPC20 and then if you're going to go around a corner whether it's a two-way, three-way or four-way it's going to be the PPC22. So those are two mental notes um, that you're going to want to remember and we have another slide to make sure we hammer that uh, point home in just a little bit. Um, as far as the duplexes, okay, so um, this is where you're actually going to plug in your computer, plug in your light, whatever the case may be. Um, and again, these duplexes actually snap into the block themselves. All right, so you have uh, bullet three there, and that has all the different options um, as far as the marked circuitry of these duplexes. And again, that goes back to not only the system's power that you want to utilize, but also what the building has to offer. And as Sherry said, if you talk to the facilities manager, talk to the electrician, um, they understand that better than we can ever explain it to you. And they will direct you as to what circuits um, you need to specify for that.
Um, last other uh, bullet point there is that they are actually specified in boxes of six. So again, if you need a total of six per, um, you just need one box. You don't need six individual pieces. So that's something that uh, is kind of an oops that you'll make once, but again, a nice little tip and trick to keep in the back of your mind when specifying duplexes. Um, as far as duplexes go, we also have USB duplexes. These are incredibly handy for, again, if you want to specify the Beltway power um, with InCapture. It's a nice way, again, to charge your phone or tablet. Um, instead of having the plug, you can just utilize that USB portion itself. Um, the USB duplexes are actually sold in a quantity of one or six, depending on the layout and how, how large the job is. Um, it snaps right into the block just like a regular duplex um, and basically has the same um, look and feel other than the fact that it's a USB as opposed to a plug. All right, so we talked about um, base fees a little earlier, but this is basically how you're going to get the power from either the ceiling or the wall into um, the panel itself. And as you see there, there's uh, quite a few options for um, the base feed version, okay? So first off, we have a hardwire version or a plug version. Your hardwire option is going to give you the most flexibility when it comes to the circuit, so you can utilize all four circuits. If you use the plug version, you're only going to be able to utilize circuit one. So again, depending on size of job, how many stations, how much power you need, um, that can very much be the determining factor of which version you go with. Um, as far as kind of the, the pictures on the top there, I know you guys are visual, so looking at those, those infeeds actually snap into where a duplex would. So that actually goes into the face of the frame itself. Um, the picture down at the bottom is actually the end mount. So that will actually go inside the frame itself and attach into the end of the block um, as well as um, the hardwire um, New York City version. That's kind of a combination of both. It actually um, attaches inside the frame itself and then actually has a built-in harness that goes to the block next to it. But again, that's specific to New York. All right, and then the other one is that if the building um, has their power in the ceiling and it's going to come down from the ceiling, we have um, the combination power pole and then the ceiling infeed. So that ceiling infeed is going to be attached up into um, the power in the ceiling, drop down the um, power pole and then attach into the power block. Now with capture it were a little unique in that the power poles themselves are very specific and used as an actual connector so you don't actually need a three or four way or end of run piece that power pole is actually the connection piece. So again looking at that in the price book you're going to have a page that says um, end of run corner three way you're going to utilize that power pole with the size of the frame so that all your holes coordinate so you can get your power down from the ceiling into the frame seamlessly and everything look great on the outside. And again, you saw this in Module 1 and Module 2, and guess what? Here it is again in Module 3. It is that cable capacity, and again, depending on the thickness of cable that you have um, and whether you have power or not, you have the ability to reference that so you can plan accordingly. And again, one other fun fact with that is that if you have a lot of cable or very um, cable-centric installation, um, you can very easily drop another power pole coming down the other way or again get it from the floor or the wall. So there's different ways around it, um, but again that's assuming that um, kind of all the power is coming in one spot and flowing um, east to west in one manner. And last but not least, uh, we hit on some of the communication modules. Again, um, kind of as a convenience to you, we do offer communication modules. We have um, some CAT5 options and some CAT6 options. And again, this is just an ease for you. This um, comes with the jack and the faceplate that will snap right into our opening. Um, let's be very honest, a lot of IT guys like to control everything. So again, they oftentimes want to use their own jack. Um, if that is the case, um, we can very much accommodate that. Our opening is very standard, so they can use the jack from the manufacturer they desire, and it can still utilize our openings in our frame. If you guys have any questions specifically to the opening size or need that, um, again, you have the um, way to ask those questions at the end, and we can very much supply that information for those different types of manufacturers.
So with that, let's discuss the planning guidelines and how we need to wire a workstation and how the parts interact. So as Mike mentioned before, the PPC-20 would be the connector or the harness to connect blocks in a straight condition. And uh, um, PPC-48 is an example of how you would power blocks, co considering that the blocks are one on top of the other, to connect raceway to beltway. Um, these, uh, keep in mind that these connectors are internal, so it's inside the frame itself. Uh, and also, we mentioned the 20s go in a straight condition. The 22s are a smidgen longer so that they can wrap in a two-way, three-way, and a four-way condition, as you see in this diagram here. Here is a list, and keep in mind, all of this is in your price book. But here is a quick guide to help give you an idea of the connection length you would need if you were to do a pass-through situation. So basically, you would take the width of that panel that you're passing through and add 24 inches, what we like to say 12 on either side, going into the um, adjoining frames. And that would give you the overall calculated length that you would need for a connector. Now we do offer an auto electrical routine in Giza. Um, again, just as in the auto hardware, we just want to make sure that you are aware of how to manually specify the parts and pieces. If for any some reason your panels are not connected properly or snapped into place, it can misread what is, is needed. So pay close attention to that. There is an AE icon on your Giza software, which is the um, icon you would need to be able to get auto hardware to work. One thing that I like to do, and has been a real hit when I've discussed before, is creating layers in your Giza software for the different um, applications of electrical you're using. So for instance, if you are using Raceway, and beltway power both in a drawing, it's very hard to differentiate in a 2D layout what is what, and much worse for an installer to try to figure out how to install. So what I always suggest is create, for instance, create a layer raceway and say it's uh, color blue, and then create a layer beltway and say it's color green. And therefore, when you draw all the parts and pieces applicable to the uh, different um, uh, locations, it's going to be much easier to s visually see on the 2D and even much easier for the installer as you can turn on and off those layers and give them just an uh, installation plan of beltway electrical and then you can turn on just the layers for instance for raceway and give them an installation drawing just for raceway. So very helpful tip that I find. Um, again we do offer the auto electrical routine in CAP as well and same, same thing to just keep in mind. It's under the automation tools where you can locate it, but keep in mind, again, it's important to understand how the electrical connects itself. So and some important planning guideline notes and things to keep in mind. These are some things we like to suggest. Um, I think it's important in a layout that you add the electrical last. Um, once you put in your frames, your work surfaces, your supports, your, your task lights, your computers, all the things that need to be plugged in, it's a much easier way to determine where those outlets need to be located. Also, when placing the electrical in a drawing, I think it's important to work from the base feed location starting point out so that you can make sure that you are following male-female connections, blocks to connectors. Um, also, as Mike pointed out, remember that data modules cannot be placed in pre-powered panels, so it's really important to make sure that you allow openings for that. Again, as he had mentioned, if you have, say, a 48-inch wide panel and you want a block on one side for a duplex but the other side needs to be blank for a data module, you would therefore um, specify in that 48-inch wide panel, you'd specify a 24-inch block, so it only takes up one side. One thing we suggest um, for ease of installation is try to think ahead of time how your, pa your power and your data is going to work. If you can possibly specify all pre-powered at once or then all manually, pick one or the other options to do, and that way it's pretty consistent throughout your drawings. Some value engineering or um, tips or, or ideas um, to help save some money is if you can uh, span a bunch of panels um, and use longer harnesses instead of spanning like one panel only at a time. Therefore, you can use maybe one long harness versus a couple different short ones and save on, on money. And another thing that we often like to do is if you power down the spline of a cluster of workstations, 
maybe make those pre-powered all consistent panels down the spline and then maybe put your data um, in perpendicular panels on the sides that would help save for cost as well so once again um, don't forget to check out idea starters on our website they are a great way to learn better about how our parts and pieces go together and to double check the specs that are there as well provided and kind of get you to walk through how Everything from, from panel layout to electrical layout to, you know, the work surface supports and so forth that we'll be discussing in later modules. Um, as mentioned previously, we talk heavily on Giza and AutoCAD CAP as our software, but we do offer our Trendway product and other software programs, which is mentioned here. And again, if you have any questions pertaining to that, you can contact technical support as mentioned. Um, feel free to call the design studio department or um, email us at design at trendway.com if you have any electrical specification questions in, in designing your layouts and we'll also be more than happy to double check your work just to make sure that you're on the right path. Anything else? Um, and also just make sure and check out our website trendway.com uh, there's a breadth of information and tools in order to help you learn more about our product. And finally, some additional resources that you can link on, our 2020 training link. Uh, we have numerous more training videos to help assist you, and our capture price books have pretty much everything that we've mentioned in these modules. So thanks for joining us, and we look forward to talking to you on module number four, Understanding Capture Components.